This might be a longer chat today as an FYI. Hi everyone and welcome back to another Coffee Talk podcast episode. Today I am sitting down in our virtual cafe with a nice peppermint tea. Let me know if you're drinking anything down below for our chat today. And I wanna just do a general check-in on how are you doing? I've written down prompts that you can totally take. I'll put them on the screen. I'll also put them in the description. Use them for journaling, for checking in on how you're doing, especially as we start or embark on a whole new month, which this whole month is actually gonna be themed with a little bit of self-care infused conversational topics throughout the weekly Coffee Talk podcast episode. And I figured starting off with just a general check in, like how are you doing would be a great way to start. I'm going to answer the prompts myself but also give them to you guys. Feel free to come over on YouTube and leave some answers to the prompts or all of the prompts in the conversations down below. Also feel free to use these prompts to check in with loved ones, check in with friends. So I have categorized our check-in prompts into four different categories. We're going to start with physical then check in on our mental health, then check in on our emotional health, and then finish off with our spiritual health or spirit health. And like I said, I'm gonna answer these prompts and give you guys a very open, honest update on how I've been doing too. So grab up a cup, get cozy, and let's dive in. So the first check-in question under the physical umbrella is how is your physical health right now? How are you sleeping or resting? How's your nutrition and hydration? How have you been moving your body lately? I am currently pregnant and I am 35 weeks by the time that I filmed this. You guys are gonna see this in a couple weeks, but I'm feeling really good despite being very heavily pregnant. I've been sleeping well considering. I have been humbled by going through my pregnancy journey with learning how to or being taught how to through this journey truly let myself rest. I've never really been good at that before. I just feel wiped at certain times that there's nothing I can do but to lay down and rest and take a quick cat nap. Nutritionally, I'm feeling good as well. I'm still eating plant-based. I'm still making a lot of my meals at home. Filming so much lately, I've been drinking lots of teas and lots of decaf drinks and lots of tropical infusions. So I feel like I'm getting lots of hydration that way. And last but not least, movement. So movement, I would say, is the category of my physical health that I maybe haven't had as much of or haven't been able to focus as much time to. I've still been doing lots of stretching, like light stretching, lots of yoga, and I walk a lot. But outside of that, like I definitely thought I would be going for like hikes or just being a bit more physically active through my pregnancy, but we've been so busy to be able to just get what I need to get done <laughs> at the end of the day and how tired I feel. I haven't really felt like a huge urge to physically move. And I'm really missing instructing yoga classes. I'm, I'm on my yoga maternity leave now, which has been really nice in the sense of being able to take a breath and take a break a little bit. But at the same time, I really miss hosting classes. I miss just, I miss the Coast Flow studio in an active sense and just checking in with everybody and being able to just host that space. So next physical check-in question is how is your home? How's your home life doing or your actual place that you root and you, your sanctuary, your place that you feel comfortable in? For me, my house updates are honestly stressful. I thought, or at least had been very ambitious that we would get everything done before our baby came and it's just not gonna happen. I've lived in a construction zone this whole year and I'm very affected by my atmosphere. And when my atmosphere is chaotic or messy or the energy is off or weird, it affects me, like I sense it. And I've gotten better at being able to kind of create boundaries around those things or just be aware when I'm picking up on energy and letting it affect me too much. At the same time, it's so different when it's my home because my home is my sanctuary. It's always been my sanctuary. I've always made it a priority to make a really comforting, cozy home atmosphere for myself. It's definitely been a challenge living in just kind of constant renovation. I don't have an upstairs bathroom. We don't have doors on our bedroom. There's no trim on most of the downstairs. The stairs in general don't have railings. Like, and there's just clutter. I mean, we've gotten through a lot of the clutter 
but I'm running out of weeks and I'm really putting a lot of faith and trust in my partner that will at least get upstairs done because at least if that's done, I feel like I'll have a place I can just like go retreat to and feel like it's at least semi there. It's just been a new challenge for me to feel so shifty in my own home atmosphere, especially while going through such a big physical and home change of bringing new life into the world. And what I'm about to say will lead into our next check-in question, so I'll prompt you with it first, which is, how are your relationships? And something that changed in my home life this year was my partner and I officially moving into our house together. This house has become our house. Even though we were spending almost every day together already, it's totally different and I'm really enjoying it. Mostly because I think it's healing a part of me that was unable to be healed on my own in a sense. Like I almost had to get to this chapter of life to work on this little part of my heart, perhaps a little battered from my own family experience or my core family growing up. That separation, that split, and just even before the separation and split, how like disoriented and disconnected and, and kind of, what's the right word for it? I don't want to use the word delusional, but there was a lot of kind of smoke and mirrors growing up where things would be said, but other things would be felt and blah, 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 blah. So long story short, it's been a very healing experience starting my own family in my own home and getting that sense or that familiarity of family back. Just having little routines, having little traditions has been really wholesome and just rewarding for myself. And so that has been really good. My other relationships have also been doing really well. I have friends close by, Larissa, one of my best friends, moved to the town that I am currently living in now. So having her close by has been amazing. Uh, my sister and Larissa, we all spend one day a week, every week we do this kind of girls night where we watch The Bachelorette and it's been really also fulfilling. Just spending time with family with all of the events we've had going on lately, all of that has been well. My partner's mom last year was diagnosed with cancer, pretty advanced cancer, and she's been doing so well too. And I have come to truly see my partner's parents as family. Like they feel like family to me. Their thoughts, their jokes, their way of living. I just, I get so comforted also by spending time with my partner's family, which is also really fulfilling for me. So I'm very aware and will not take for granted how much that felt like a hollow hole in me when I was living in the city and kind of just doing my early 20s on my own, which was great for the chapter that it was and what I needed it to be. But that was a big thing that was missing and also a huge wound because so much of my own family turmoil was so recent and so fresh. And so being in this new chapter of life that I am now, having so many people I consider to be family and loved ones close by and just things to celebrate. And yeah, that has just been awesome. And the last physical check-in is how is your job? And if you're not currently working like a full-time job or anything like that, maybe you're a student, then just how is your day-to-day, -day? like your day-to-day -day routine, your day-to-day, -day, what, what you commit your day-to-day -day time and energy to? That one has been a complicated answer. I have a deep trust that I feel divinely guided in a transition that I can sense myself going through and perhaps have been going through for long before becoming pregnant. I think since moving, perhaps I've been in a transition. It has not been always easy. It has not been the most comfortable transition in my life, but I've been at this job now for 10 years. So something's bound to change, you know, and it's unnerving not knowing exactly what I'm transitioning to, where I'm gonna land, how I'm gonna land. At the same time, it is also refreshing because there are things that I have come to learn, understand, and know about the career path that I've chosen for myself now that I might not have known five years ago or 10 years ago. Like I'll never be able to wipe my existence from the internet. I've always shared and I love to share and I think that is part of my calling so I don't have any regrets about it. But like, I'll never have that privacy back again. I gave that away willingly for my job. And now that I'm starting a family, I definitely, I'm really emphasizing that privacy for the other people in my life because as much as I love sharing my personal life, my personal thoughts, my personal things, it's like it's starting to include more people now and that's amazing and I'll always want to share online. I'll always feel a connection to you watching this, especially those of you guys that have been through so many chapters of life with me and I'm always going to be here in some capacity to share. It's got to still just be me sharing, you know, that's something that I've at least 
come to affirm with myself right now. At the same time, unrelated to myself, zooming out from just me, I think at large, social media has changed a lot. I think that the influencer is, like, for lack of a better word, I'm putting bunny ears around influencer. I think that idea or that kind of concept is dying out a little bit. And that I think especially because what initially made influencers so popular and relatable was the relatability. And then when influencers became kind of the new version of mini fame, and I've never felt that I was necessarily famous by any means, but when thousands or millions of people follow you or know your name, to an extent, you start to get opportunities, you definitely are making good money, things start to happen that actually put you in a category that is less relatable. And for a while, I think it worked aspirationally where people would still wanna follow along and still wanna watch said influencers for that sense of inspiration, aspiration, motivation. But it's a catch 22 because then it's like, again, where's the relatability? Where's that humility? Where is the humanness in it that can allow people to also feel like you're inspirational, you're aspirational, but you're also relatable because you still deal with day-to-day -day problems or human problems or so be it, so forth. All this to say, I definitely think the online world is shifting and changing. I think that there's things I could do and it's always an option to do to stay relevant, to stay in the curve, the changing curve. I don't feel called to those things and I have to honor that for myself. And so there's a bit of a grieving process and there has been for a while because I'm well aware that like I'm not growing on the line anymore and I'm always going to be so grateful and so thankful and will always keep in mind the core group of you guys that have stayed with me. People out there that I can help uplift or just make feel seen or feel create a comforting space or create an open space for others to feel like they're not alone or that they can relate or to just share what I feel called to share, what I feel I've intuitively known or the wisdom that has been embedded in me for whatever reason, I still love sharing those things. But how I see myself fitting in with this changing online world, I don't know. And I definitely have ideas of things I might be transitioning into and I've definitely already made moves like with starting a online yoga studio, with opening up things like events, with hosting different types of content and playing around and testing out different types of content. Also, unrelated, I would never be able to live off of this income, but my writing, like just sharing books, things like that, I mean, there's options. These are all things that I definitely still feel called to. I don't know the answer, I really don't. But I definitely don't think that my personal influencer lifestyle is growing anymore. And I'm grieving that at the same time that I feel relieved a little bit by that because it's allowing me to just like relax and live a little bit and not feel like I need to be someone bigger than I am. I'm being brought to see how much work I've really done on my own confidence, my own sense of self, because a big part of starting my online career or even doing this as a hobby or YouTube way back in the day was because I just wanted to have a space that was for me. I wanted to feel validated. I wanted to feel seen. I wanted to have an outlet for my creativity because I felt so unseen in my actual life or insecure. I felt like people didn't like me. It ended up filling that gap, which at the time was almost like a bomb, you know, a very soothing, healthy, nourishing bomb to this really powerful and painful feeling that I would have. Thank God I went through therapy so that I didn't rely on that and did work on that so that now, because what goes up must come down as it's been coming down, it's definitely been a test to see like how much work I've done. If I'm able to stay true to myself and stay in my sense of self and validate myself as people continue to kind of leave or walk away and how I've been able to feel about that and comfort it, be comforted by that. Anybody that creates anything or does anything wants to feel appreciated, obviously. And I experience that feeling. So when I create things, I want it to help other people and I have definitely embedded in my brain that oh, I've helped people when people appreciate or have told me that they appreciate what I have created. So it's a dangerous cycle, especially when you get to such a big place online where so many people are validating you. When that starts to trickle away, less and less people are validating you, or you create something and nobody really seems to like 
really like catch to it or like love it or whatever. It just doesn't perform very well, doesn't do very well. It's a test. It's a really big test to see how strong you are within yourself, why you're doing what you're doing, what you're doing it for. For me, that's been interesting. There's days I definitely have to step away because I'm taking it too personally, but I'm able to catch that and I'm able to like let it go. And truly, I just come back to this feeling that I have that I am definitely being divinely guided to something new or something else or something different. I don't know if it's fully new, just to remorph it, reshape it, transition it into something else that still allows me to help people and do what I do and create, but in a completely different way. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes over the next few years. I can tell I've already been talking for a long time because the incense that I'm burning behind me here is like done. <laughs> so I'll try to speed through these next prompts a little bit quicker, but we've had lots to catch up on, I guess. Let's check in mentally. The first check-in question being, what's taking up your thoughts or your headspace lately? The fact that I'm about to become a mom, I mean, I think about my incoming little one all the time. A lot of my headspace has been taken up by feeling like I need to problem solve lately. Like there's a lot of things I need to get done and not a whole lot of time to do it, which is kind of pressing against my thoughts and pressing against my mind a lot to kind of nudge me or urge me forward and it's really intelligent the way that our brains do things because it generates sometimes fear it generates sometimes anxiety it also generates like excitement or motivation to and i think it's to truly like propel me forward and get these things completed and done it could also be hormonally like i'm nesting a lot but there's a lot of stuff i still really need to get or feel i need to get organized or think i need to get organized or done there's been this like impending okay i need to have this figured out i need to have this figured out and then i always have to remind myself like no you don't you just need to trust and just keep taking it one step at a time focus on one project at a time and allow the change to kind of wash over you in waves and that helps me not get too overstimulated not get too overwhelmed and just focus and, and tackle things one at a time even though sometimes I still look at the mountain of things to do and think like wow I feel like I'm not getting a whole lot done then I look back in hindsight and I'm like wow I've actually done a lot so it's kind of teetering that line the next check-in question is is there anything that's stressing you out or that you're worried about and yeah I feel like I kind of just answered that a little bit I'm stressed out by just how much I feel I need to do and there's no one that can really help me do it. These are all things that I personally have to do myself and so that can also be daunting at times because it can feel really isolating. I have gotten really good advice on ways to tackle all of the things that I need to just sit down and focus on and the way that my brain works sometimes is when I know that there's like a big thing that I need to do to sit down and just and just zone out and it's gonna take me hours at a time. It's almost like I'll find anything to procrastinate or avoid doing it or just stay away from the discomfort of having to really get into the nitty gritty of something that feels very chaotic and messy for me. I wear all the hats in my business and there's no one else that can wear a lot of those hats. I mean, I have an assistant, she does the, as much as she can, but it's just kind of like the easy pass off stuff that she's able to do. A lot of it is still me that I have to do, or at least I have to give her the bedrock or kind of like, still do a decent amount of it and then she's able to kind of take it from there and deliver it for me so it's been a lot of preparation in that end both business wise and also personally like and also on top of that uh labor <laughs> is something i'm also thinking about too just i guess i'm not worried or stressed about it but i'm curious to see how i'm gonna be coping how I'll, how i'm gonna adapt those first few weeks still kind of working I mean, I've definitely taken big steps backwards on how much I've committed to online so that I'm able to take somewhat of a break or maternity leave, but I'm not fully signing off. So I'm still gonna be doing like community events and I'm still gonna be hosting a book club. And I'm interested to see how I'll cope with that as I go into new mom life. Yeah, there's lots of change. I wouldn't say it's necessarily stressing me out, but it's definitely on my radar and I'm thinking about it a lot. The next question is, how are you processing life lately? So by that I mean, as you go about answering this question for yourself, like with everything that's going on, how does it feel as it's being processed through the brain? And for me, I honestly want to give credit where credit's due, as silly as this sounds. I don't know how I've been doing so well with all of the change, 
all of the upheaval of just this year. I found out I was pregnant December 23rd and since then and at the time my heat was broken in this house so like I was I literally wasn't home I didn't live here for almost two months because there was no heat and it was ice freaking cold mid of Canadian winter negative 30s plus wind chill like very cold and so that mixed with then going right into house renovations right into just like pregnancy and unexpected and unplanned but very welcomed by the time we had made that decision but still very like all right we're doing this and changes in my job changes in my career changes in the world changes in my family life changes just changed so much change so somehow i felt very grounded i felt very chill even as I'm stressing out, it's almost like it's not bubbling up to the surface. I get my blood pressure checked quite often now that I'm pregnant. My blood pressure is very, very low. So like as much as I might be thinking about these things, it's like clearly they're not physically manifesting for me, which is great. And it's great for my baby too. A part of me makes a joke every time I say it that it's the Virgo in me because my baby is based on the due date. I'm having a Virgo and I'm a Pisces, which on the astrology chart are complete opposites to each other. So I wonder if that's just like balancing me out completely, grounding me completely. Also too, with having a boy, if the testosterone hormones in my body are also kind of grounding out my more estrogen and just making me feel like super harmonious, which let's just stay on the astrology train. My moon's in Libra. So I'm not only double Pisces, which is two fish swimming in opposite directions. I'm also moon Libra, which is two scales. So when things are balanced and in harmony, I feel great. And somehow I've felt very balanced and in harmony just Despite how much has really been like, you know, shaking up in my life two years ago, three years ago, the slightest little bump in my life would send me into an anxiety spiral. So yeah, <laughs> been pretty good. Not bad, not bad. So the final mental check-in question is, what are you doing to maintain your mental wellness? And if you don't really know or feel like you've been doing anything, then what could you be doing to maintain your mental wellness? I have been taking things slow. I have been accepting what is. I definitely have a very easy basic routine on a day-to-day -day basis right now, which allows me to not feel too overwhelmed or too overcommitted to trying to do too many things. At this rate, I'm very comfortable with what I'm getting done, how fast I'm getting things done but I can see how much I still need to get done and I can calculate even without really sitting down and doing the math that I'm probably not gonna be able to get everything done. Same with our house, same with just everything. So it's just learning how to be comfortable in that discomfort of, okay, just gonna have to figure it out somehow when there's a newborn here. Some of you, especially some of you that might have babies might be like, good luck, <laughs> but you do what you gotta do, you know? That's kind of the way that life works you just do what you gotta do and so spending lots of time just out in nature or laying on the couch with my partner at the end of the day or i've been getting like pedicures because i can't reach my toes anymore and two or three prenatal massages here and there just doing booking things in so that i'm making sure that i'm taking care of myself or pampering myself a little bit has also really helped me keep my mental health in check. So let's move on to emotionally. The first prompt being, how have you been feeling lately about life? And I feel like I've already kind of answered this, so I won't elaborate too deep on this one. I feel excited. Despite everything, I feel excited. I feel like life is moving really quickly right now. And part of me definitely on a day-to-day -day basis feels this urgency to like just hold on to little moments as I can. Even in my pregnancy, I know I'm gonna miss being pregnant. I have genuinely enjoyed being pregnant, which isn't everybody's experience. So I feel very grateful that my pregnancy has been easy on me. And it's been something that I have been able to enjoy because I have loved it. I have loved the feeling of growing life. I have loved this connection that I have. I'm really looking forward to stepping into mom life. I'm really looking forward to autumn. I'm really looking forward to just this whole new chapter that I'm transitioning into. It's been a big transition year and I feel excited and I'm anticipating just what's coming down the lane at the same time that I'm trying to just soak up the present as much as I can because I know that 
I'll get there eventually. I know it's coming. And so I want to enjoy now too, knowing that I'll enjoy then then. Does that make sense? The next question is, how are you feeling about the world? And this is a hard question for me to answer. I think especially too, because there's always a part of me that fears if I were to totally uncensor myself and talk about what I think or what I feel about the world at large, that one, I would either be heavily judged or I don't know, maybe people just like wouldn't understand where I was coming from or two, that'll scare the crap out of anybody, which I don't want to do. And it's not even that I'm scared about the changes in the world, but I definitely see patterns that are happening. Something's going on. There's changes happening for sure. And, and you know what? That's not even like a puzzle to figure out. There's always change happening on a global scale, but I think it's been very progressed. Part of it is the advances in technology, how that changes things like currency, the changes in the climate, uh, the changes in lifestyles, the changes of culture, the changes in the economy, the changes in our global connections, our global awareness, uh, definitely changes in the collective in terms of even just what social media is doing and how it's changing us and changing our minds and changing the, changing the way that we communicate, changing the way that we connect. Mostly I try and focus on the good and lean into the good and try to believe that we all choose to come to the world at the times we do for a reason because I can get very existential and I can worry a lot about, you know, the, the rate that we are destroying our planet or how we treat animals or how we treat each other or the hypocrisy. Is that the word? Yeah. Like how hypocritical it is that there are certain things that kind of like trend in terms of, in terms of activism, but then it's like something else that's just equally as wrong is just like nobody cares about that and it's literally only because something is trending that people tend to care about it and that can be really like disheartening and like ugh, it just if i get deep into it I'll, I'll i would literally turn this into a completely different coffee talk and i won't and it's also because i'm figuring it out for myself like i definitely don't have all of the answers i just i sit with these types of world questions a lot with my intuition and a lot with selected people that i feel very comfortable and not judged by that I can really talk about what I'm seeing, sensing and feeling and have them tell me what they're seeing, sensing and feeling, even if it's different than mine and just have those open spaces to have those conversations. It's become difficult to have those types of conversations online even, especially when talking to such a diverse group, you know? I am an optimist and I will actively choose to be an optimist until the day I'm no longer on earth, even then, I don't know, maybe I can take that optimism wherever I might go next. But I say that because there is enough pes pessimists out there. There's enough negativity out there that I have to believe, even if things have been imbalanced in a way, that things have seemed really bad and really hard, that it is all meant to kind of like break things down so that we can create something better or create or change or transition globally. Uh, I think that there's lots of barriers in the way to getting there. Power and greed being two of the biggest ones. And I feel like I'm talking a lot in very generic and <laughs> kind of like non-specific terms, but it's because, I mean, we could get to the nitty gritty of it, but realistically we're talking about a global system, a global world that needs new values. That's been running on the wrong values for long enough that we have allowed certain things to happen. Not we, it's not our technical faults, but like that the world has gotten to where it is because of the value systems that we have prioritized. And so, I like to think that maybe there's a great reckoning happening or a great breaking happening so that we can awaken and evolve for lack of better terms, or at least create an opportunity to choose for everybody to individually choose if they would like to awaken or evolve to something better or revert and reverse back to something worse or just stay the same, I don't know. You are here on the planet, I'm here on the planet. I think we're all here on the planet for a reason. I think we all hold a special amount of opportunity and power. And I think that, you know, what comes to mind is that comforting quote where it's like, if you wanna change the world, first change yourself. And so I've been really trying to actually take that into consideration and into my day-to-day -day life where, okay, if this is the stuff that I'm seeing on the internet that like disheartens me and makes me sad that this stuff trends or whatever. It's like, okay, am I feeding it or am I fighting it? And so 
I fight it by choosing to go a different way or choosing to focus my energy on something different and use what's within my control to focus on the good. Because I also think that if you focus too much on the bad or even fighting, that that can also shift and change your energy. Depends on who you are. You might have been put on this planet to be a strong worded activist and all power to you. As I said earlier, I need harmony. <laughs> I need balance in order for me to feel like I can fully show up full cup and help in the ways that I'm able and I'm, I've been given tools or gifted tools to help with the time, energy, and resources I have on this planet. So that was a bit of a tangent. But <laughs> long story short, I feel like the world is also going through a huge transition. I choose to stay and remain optimistic and I choose to focus on what's within my control and use what's within my control to do good or leave good or you know, add to a higher frequency or a higher elevation for not just myself or my loved ones. But even when I come online, like as much as I can, I try to do good and be better. Next check-in question is what feeling or emotion is most dominant right now? Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> Ooh, I would say excitement. I'm gonna just go with excitement. There's lots of energy and it feels mostly exciting. And then next is, are there any feelings or emotions you're avoiding? And if so, what's causing them? And a little bit of fear, a little bit of fear. And I, I know this because I recently talked about this and it's so it's fresh in my memory that I was discussing specific things I've been avoiding doing. And the person I was speaking with kind of reflected back to me that the reason why I'm probably avoiding those things is because they elicit an emotion of shame and fear. And so to try and do those things or focus on those things or turn to those things and like put my energy and time there it's almost like intuitively i'm trying to avoid having to face those feelings getting things done that i know i'm fully capable and fully competent in but it's me it makes me face a lot of my fears and even with the capacity of consciously knowing that i am fully capable and fully competent there's clearly still some subconscious and unconscious work I can do there. The advice I was given in order to do that, by the way, in case anybody can relate to that generic feeling, is to create a very welcoming, comforting atmosphere to face those things. Sit down, wrap your hair in a nice bun, make yourself a nice tea or coffee, light a candle, like create a good atmosphere for you to feel like you're in your power before taking on those tasks, before taking on those big, problems or puzzles that you want to solve. And lastly, let's talk about how we're doing spiritually. And the first check-in question is, how have you been spending time to nourish your spirit? And if you feel like you maybe haven't been, then how can you spend more time to nourish your spirit? Just taking more time to journal. I've also been doing a lot of like frequency music, frequency meditations and stretches, even if they're just really short taking that time and making an effort <laughs> because I feel like, again, sometimes we build things up. Or, okay, I build things up, don't let me project. I build things up in my head to think that they need to be like this like grand big thing when really it's just like unroll your mat and literally stretch for five minutes is all you have to do. You don't have to light incense. You don't have to like set the vibe every time. That's all it takes for me to feel like reconnected to my spirit again. And if I were to say that there was anything more I could do, I would like to spend these next few weeks taking a little time out, even if it's just once a week on the weekend to go for a nice long walk in nature. I think that would also kind of just be the last little bit of something I could do to really take the time to nourish my spirit and get me out of the house, get me out of the construction zone a little bit. Next is... What things light you up lately or give you energy? I don't know why, or like maybe it's the nester in me a little bit. Cooking, I have like had such a thing lately for food and finding creative ways to combine foods and flavors. And part of it is also too that I've been starting to prep meals for, for the freezer for when we have our newborn. So it's been fun kind of challenging myself with different recipes and having fun with things. And just, I think cooking for more than one person is a big part of it too, because it's like more than just me that gets to enjoy it. What soul lessons have you been learning? I think I've been going through a big life lesson of letting go in so many different facets of life. When I catch myself feeling super wound up or overwhelmed or like everything's kind of piling on itself, I have to just take a deep breath and let go 
and like quite literally I do a physical exercise where I breathe and I like tense up all of my muscles and I squeeze my hands into fists and then as I exhale I relax all my muscles and I mentally imagine just letting the thought go, letting the emotion pass through me, letting go of control, letting go of the need to be or do things perfectly, letting go of the need for things to be done by a certain time or on my timeline or have everything figured out right away at the snap of my fingers, letting go of what has been, letting go of the past, letting go of what my career looked like for so long so that I can make space for new ideas and new things to come in and take shape, letting go of my solo life. I mean, I'll always be a solo independent girl, don't get me wrong, but I mean, letting go of my lifestyle as someone that lived alone and only had to kind of focus on myself for a long time to, in order to make space to take up new roles and take up new parts of myself and ignite new parts of myself that will be nurturing, that'll be a mother, that'll be a lover. Like it's just been a huge, huge soul lesson of letting go. At times hard, but definitely the main feeling it gives me is relief. And so I, it makes me realize I've been holding on to things for maybe too long or staying at the fair too long. It's like the lights are off, the fair rides aren't running anymore, like it's time to leave the fair. <laughs> and. I get super sentimental and nostalgic about chapters of life and time moving past and I try to capture as much of it as I can but it's like it's sometimes just so freeing to just let yourself let go. And the last check-in question is what are you most grateful for right now? <sighs> Despite all of the change, which I actually am very grateful for the change, I am very very grateful for the opportunity to sit here and hold this space, host this space. I'm very grateful for my family. I'm very grateful for my friends. I'm very grateful for my pup and our pets. I'm very grateful for this day. As corny as that sounds and cliche, I know I'm kind of getting real off with it and getting super into the cream corn, which corn came back to the grocery store this week. <laughs> very unrelated, but I've been craving corn like no other, like a good buttery cob of corn. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I'm very grateful for my body, for all that it's done for me. Going through this change physically in my body, one of the things that has blown my mind is how embodied I felt through this change more physically. I could not care less if I gained more weight. I don't even know how much weight I've fully gained in my pregnancy, I just don't care. I don't care if I'm eating too much or whatever. Like to an extent you have to care for your health, but like I, I basically just eat till I'm full. I'm not worried about it. I have not given two thoughts about how I'm gonna look after this or like how quickly I'll be able to like get back into shape. Do I wanna move? Yes, because I love the feeling of a good cardio high. And so I miss that feeling a little bit. I'm gonna take the full time I need to heal my body before I even think about doing those things again. One of the biggest areas of life that I used to struggle and so that I still get kind of little, little tests here and now and then when I'm around somebody that is like super restrictive or is super hard on themselves. And that's a completely personal thing for someone else to go through and I don't wish it upon anybody. When I get around it though, does it sometimes try to turn on the parts of my brain that used to do that or used to be that way? Yes, but it doesn't get me. It's like, I just don't. I used to get so angry and I used to get so mad, but for the most part, I'm able to just kind of not, you know, I'm just like, that's not my, that's not mine to pick up. Everybody's on their own journey. Everybody's got to figure it out for themselves and love themselves enough to want health and balance for themselves. I can't do that for other people. I can't, uh, that's not mine to carry or take on. I feel really healthy, I feel really good, and I just don't feel anywhere close to the girl I was. Or she's gone, I don't know, or maybe she's just evolved. Let's go with that one. So I'm taking the days as they come, I'm taking the waves as they come, and I'm grateful for each one. And so that's our very long check up and check in. Again, I'll leave all the prompts down below. I'm also going to post them to the All Things Co's Instagram. So if you guys aren't following, I'll usually do recaps on or just like little snippets from coffee talks and just post a lot of motivational, inspirational, cozy content on the Instagram. So I'll put it right here on the screen and also it's linked down below in the description. But if you want those prompts, they'll be there as well. And thank you for allowing me to just let you in on how I've been lately. So I would love to hear if you're willing to share how are you doing. Answer any or all of the prompts down below. Use these prompts for yourself to check in. Ask these questions to the people you know and you love. And without further ado, I love you guys all the way to the moon and back. And I'll chat with you guys in our next self-care infused chat of August. Bye guys. <laughs>